Hi guys, it's your Pontiff, Paul Pluter, on the Paul Pluter channel. Today guys, I'm doing a paid review. Paid review, this is for Vic, Vic, Vic. And this is paid review 20A42. 20A42. And before, before I uh, continue, I want to do a wrist watch check. And I want to show you my beautiful Jager LeCoultre Reverso Grand Day. And I've got this on a Theo and Harris strap. It's red on one side and the beautiful caramel on the other. And I, I, I got to tell you, I've been loving this watch for, for a long time. And I love the Theo and Harris touch. Okay, let's get into this email, this paid review. Hey Arch, love the videos, enjoy watching your channel. I'm ready for a paid review on my collection and have sent you 50 US dollars. Because we know the pontiff doesn't do shit for free. I won't bore you with all the shitters, but I will include a watch I've pretty much retired. It's a Breitling chronometer. Chronometer. Crosswind from 2001. Uh, I keep it for sentimental value because it has been on many adventures with me as a young man. At the time, diamond bezels were all the rage, but at this point, I find it hard to wear even after toning it down by replacing the bracelet with a leather strap. Next up is my steel Rolex Datejust 41. It has the fluted white gold bezel. With Jubilee band and slate grey dial with green Roman numerals. This is a versatile piece for me and I wear it quite often. For my sports watch, I went with a steel Rolex GMT Master 2 Batman. I wear this mostly <clears throat> in the daytime or casual situations. I also take this watch on with me when I'm traveling. For my gold watch, I went with one of my dream watches, the 40 mil Day Date Presidential. That's the Rolex Day Date in yellow gold. For this one, I chose a champagne dial with Roman numerals. I feel like a true dress watch on a leather strap is the next step in the evolution of my collection with three Rolex pieces already I feel like the perfect choice would be Patek Philippe. I'm a fan of the annual calendars and have been trying to decide between the 5135G and the 5205G. From what I've found on the secondary market I can purchase a 5135 in the low 20s US dollar, that's 20,000 low 20s range or I can save up and wait for the 5205 in the low 30s. Please let me know what you think between the two. I'm sure you can't go wrong with either but love the pontiff's opinion. Also do you have any other tips or suggestions <clears throat> if I should continue adding after the dress watch or should I just keep it as a five piece combo meal deal? All the best and stay safe from COVID, Vic, 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 Vic. Thank you so much. This is a great review. I love it when I got classy fuckers. And you, my friend, you, um, um, you, my friend, uh, I gotta be honest with it. I gotta be honest with you guys. Gotta be honest. I really do think this is it. This is it, man. You want to get a nice compact collection? Enjoy life. You want to enjoy the lifestyle. You want to have the fun. You want to have the fun. So let's have a look here. <clears throat> now I'm just calling up. I've got, I like to just see this. <clears throat> he sent me a pic, but I want to call it up in color because I've made a few mistakes. When I do the printouts on the run sheets, it's black and white. I like to have a bit more of a, a look there. Uh, so so here we go. Just checking, checking, checking. I've got the 
Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. Holy shit! Yeah, the Brightlings have been on the blingy side. Bling, bling, bling. Okie dokie. Okay. Holy shit, that is blingy. My God. <laughs> but it, the thing is, the Brightling crosswinds you, has good memories. You did so much with it. It's a good. It's a. It's a good thing to keep. It's not the most terrible watch you could have had. It's. That's okay. I'm glad you got more taste as you got more money. Then you got the Rolex. The Rolex is gorgeous. My God, the Rolex. We're talking the Rolex. They just 41. I love it with the gray, slate gray dial and the uh, the green Romans. Love it, love it, love it. You got the white gold bezel Jubilee. That's just pops. Absolutely pops. It pops. Uh, and the next thing we've got is as a sports watch we got a batman batman yes batman i think i actually prefer the batman to the batgirl i prefer the oyster bracelet instead of the jubilee <clears throat> and then of course we've got the day date 40 which i gotta be honest with you the 36 mil far too small far too small you've really i think a date just is a great watch you can borderline get away with it at 36, but the day day, it needs a bit more substance. Um, <clears throat> I think the day day two, or even better, the day day, the 40 mil. Um, you've, you've got the, the 40, I think. It's a bit hard to tell with just how the, the image looks on the screen, but perfect, 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 perfect. Now, I got to tell you, man, for you, for you, absolutely. Patek Philippe! Patek Philippe. 100% paddock, paddock, paddock. So the question is, what's my opinion? Would I go for a 5135, which is basically, it's, it's a torno, torno shaped case, uh, or would I go for the 5205? Now I've got to tell you, the 5205 is absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, very modern, contemporary. However, you're paying massive premium because it's kind of the cool annual calendar at the moment. I'm always someone who wants value. I want value. Uh, and what I mean by that is I want something which has got potential. Now, if we look at Paddock, the Torno style, they had a Paddock many years ago had a perpetual calendar, the TV screen, Torno case. And it was a bit of a dog. It was never popular. Nobody wanted it. And then all of a sudden, it exploded in popularity. So I've got to be totally honest with you. I think the 5135, absolute bargain. It's a nice, modern, contemporary size. Uh, I think, man, low 20s is an absolute cracker of a deal. Now, I've got the 5035, which is, you know, it's it's a little bit in, in my collection. It tells the story. Um, but I've got to be honest with you, the 5135, I've always thought was perfect. I think it's a bargain. I, I would definitely pull the trigger on the 5135. Is the 5205 cooler? Possibly. Yes, yes, possibly. $10,000 cooler? No. No, I would say it's about 5000 cooler, but it's not $10,000. In fact, I think the 5135 is absolutely gorgeous. I, I, I would, would... Funny thing is, David SW had one of these low 20s. I think it was 22, 23. And I, it stopped me in the tracks. It's actually cheaper than a 5146. And I thought, wow... And I'd, I'd definitely go for it. I think, you know, that torno shape, very contemporary, very modern. Uh, you know, sometimes shapes go in and out. It's like colour metals. Yellow gold is out. It'll come back. Yellow gold will come back. You know, rose gold, white gold. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all a little bit... Um, it's just how it goes there. But I, I would say, seriously... I'd have no problems getting a 5135. I think the white gold, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I, I can't see a problem, man. I, I honestly, 
I, I love the 5205, but you're paying a premium because it's the cool annual calendar at the moment. And and the thing is, what you've got to remember is is that Paddock will always bring out cooler and cooler pieces. Before the 5205 came out, I was really in love. Well, I still love it. The 5396. And that that's a gorgeous paddock. I still think it's gorgeous. But, you know, I, I, like, I do like a bit of value. For some reason, the tornado-shaped case has gone a bit soft. But I'd, I'd have no... No qualms whatsoever. Pull the trigger. It's 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 a it's a fantastic. It's got these separate little eyes for the for the, the day date and the and the month. It's got a moon phase. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely cracking. It's a cracker of a piece. I I, I would definitely take advantage of it. Uh, no questions at all. I'm a value shopper. I'm a value shopper. I I really do want. Value, value is very important to me. That, that's, that's kind of what I, I look for um, when I'm buying something. I want a bit of value. I want value. Value's very important to me. So what, what do I think? Pull the trigger, pull the trigger. Get a 5135, get it. it it's, a, it's, it's an annual calendar. It's, 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 it's beautiful, beautiful piece. And it's... I gotta say, compared to other annual calendars, it's a bargain. It's a bargain. I think it's a better watch. I've got the 5035. I think it's a much better watch, more contemporary, more modern. The 5035, I got it because it's sentimental. It was my 40th birthday present, and I had to sell it because of financial reasons, but I managed to get that very same watch back. And it was it was just it was the first annual calendar, and so it's got a little bit of historical significance. But if I was buying an annual calendar, uh, they're starting to rise a bit. This is so the bargain, the 5135, 100%. Pull the trigger, pull the trigger. Definitely, it's a beautiful watch. Um, look, I think you've got a really nice collection there, it'll fit in beautifully because you like a bigger size, so the 5135 is perfect. The day date forty, I think, is beautiful. That's another perfect. That's beautiful. The, the the Batman is gorgeous. The date just, oh, that is that is classy. The Brightling is, oh, that's a bit toxic. That is a bit toxic, to be completely frank with you. I'd possibly get rid of it. Okay, I don't mean that in a nasty way. I wouldn't bargain it out. I wouldn't wholesale it out. But wait for this COVID thing to get better. Somebody tacky will want it. So I'd probably, I'd unpass it. Look, we're not going to live forever. There's not going to be museums dedicated to us. Okay, well, maybe for me, but, but nobody else. Get rid of it. Use the money. I'd, I'd probably get a Super Ocean Heritage. I think that's a much more classy Brightling to have. Okay, that is that is fucking tacky. It's tacky. It's tacky and nasty. So, yeah, that's that's definitely the way I feel about it. Now, um, let me just have a look here. You sent me a few more emails here since since that one there. You said to me, "Hey, Arch, additional information. Wanted to give you a little info to help with the vid. I'm a native New Yorker in my early 40s, and I have been into watches since college days." I worked in the electrical field and also owned a small takeout restaurant. I sold a few of my watches to buy three Rolex. I have now the only good watch I kept for my first was the Breitling Crosswinds for Sentimental. Get rid of it. It's fucking atrocious. I've since retired early and last month was the gold day date, which I got new at a significant discount. I'm a bigger guy. So around 40 to 42 mil fits me at best. Fits me best. Hope this helps. All the best, Vic. Yeah, Vic, 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 I, I do. Uh, and you also sent me, not sure, hi Arch, not sure, not sure if we started the review, but if, if, if not, I just wanted to give you an update on a new edition I just purchased. I've always loved a Speedmaster on the strap, but I haven't found one that spoke to me until now. I went with the Apollo 15 40th anniversary. Here's the 
picture. What do I think? Yes, yes, yeah, that's, that's that's quite. It's not my cup of tea. It's not quite my cup of tea, but it's 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 cool as long as you like. It. It's not actually. It's quite okay. That is quite okay. That's quite okay. Nothing wrong with that, and it's a lot more tasty than that fucking Brightling. Jesus Christ, that is tacky. That is tacky. I gotta tell you, man, get fucking rid of it. Forget sentimentality. Just fuck it off. Okay? It's tacky. It's tacky and nasty. That's what it is. Okay? There's a pimp waiting for that, man. There is a pimp waiting for it. So I'd, I'd be moving that on. But uh, definitely, 5135, pull the trigger. Don't fuck around. COVID now. Get in. Swoop in. Grab it. Uh, guys, I'm Paul Pluto. This has been a paid review for Vic. Thank you, Vic. Guys, please, uh, please, uh, put some nasty comments below for Vic. Uh, and also, guys, remember, man, COVID is taking a toll on us YouTubers. I used to get a lot of money from my Google Ads. That's all shit, because big businesses aren't advertising. Agoda's not advertising. Hertz isn't, you know, these big companies are all fucked. So, um, guys... Now, more than ever, these paid reviews keep me in the chair. Without them, it's hard for me to make content. So I would really appreciate if you could swing me a little bit, swing a little bit uh, towards, you know, getting a paid review. I honestly would really appreciate it. So, guys, help us out. I love you all. And... Um, don't forget, guys, paid reviews. I can't live on Google! Some people love fruit. Others choose to learn Greek. Some study archaeology. Others are interested in Japanese culture. For some people, everything must work just like a Swiss watch. Others appreciate the creative disarray. There are the frontline type of people, and the other type that would prefer to remain in the shadows. Most of us, however, like to study the wonders of everyday life. We cultivate traditional values in the world of modern technologies. One day, we choose exclusive restaurants. The other day, we go for street food. But there are also those people who don't have that choice at all. Some people have everything they need. And some will never have enough. Generally, a large part of our society has tons of luck when it comes to life. But we also mustn't forget to support the part that hasn't. No matter who you are, what you do, and how much you possess, if you are able to take care of the others, you have your own personal tint. Tint. Watch changes. Together. Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Yeah.